I believe that I have found one of the most underrated and disturbing FNAF fan games I have ever played. A few days ago, I was looking through some people's picks for their favorite FNAF fan games, and while searching, I heard of a game titled Eddie and the Misfits. After searching for it on GameJoel, all I could find was this archive page. Turns out this game was created by Ramanov along with another developer that goes by the name Tupperman. And as many people know, Ramanov's account was deleted from Game Jolt recently, which is the reason Eddie and the Misfits original page is nowhere to be found. Luckily, this archive page does exist though because I was able to still download the game and play it for myself. Judging by the screenshots on the Game Jolt page alone, I knew that I was in for at least a decent FNAF fan game experience. But now coming off beating the game, I can say that this game came very close to being one of my favorite FNAF fan games of all time. It was a ton of fun to play through, the visuals were insanely scary, and the story had me pretty intrigued at least during the start of the game. That's not to say this game is perfect though, as there was a lot left to be desired in a few different areas of the game. This is why today I will be going through Eddie and the Misfits, explaining everything I liked, everything I didn't like, and everything in between. Right away when starting the game, we are shown our very first pre-rendered cutscene. This one is very vague, showing a mysterious person walking around with an animal mascot costume before the cutscene fades to black. This cutscene is extremely well animated and shows that despite this game being made back in 2019, the game still had a lot of production and effort put into it. After the first cutscene ends, we then load into this really cool main menu where we can see one of the main animatronics of the game, who goes by the name Mousetrap. After pressing play, we load into our very first minigame section, which is a trend you will see throughout the game. In this first one, all we need to do is pick this lock and make our way into the building. A phone guy explains to us that this place is old and that the lock needs to be picked on a two key basis, basically meaning we must guess which two notches to lift up in order to get in. After a little bit of trial and error, we eventually open the lock and make our way into the building, which is where the first night of the game really begins. I really like the idea of showing our character entering the building. I've seen this idea done in a few different fan games before, such as Jolly Bees and Fred Bear and Friends, and I think it just adds a lot to the overall game. Seeing our character actually make our way into the building helps the place feel more real than if we just loaded straight into the office like we do in the real FNAF games. Anyways, for night one, nothing really happens at all. And and kind of just serves as a way for us to get familiar with the office. In front of us is a camera which has two floors of the building. Also right in front of us is a vent which Mousetrap will occasionally stick his head through. You will know he's sticking his head through thanks to this really cool animation that plays every time he does it. We also have an arrow at the bottom of our screen which allows us to hide under the desk from Mousetrap. To the left of us is a door and a button which will shock any animatronic standing in the window. Also off screen is another vent which the top right camera on floor 2 leads to. There is no way to see it though so if you see Mousetrap in the camera that means he will soon be coming from the vent above you and you must hide under your desk. Like I said night 1 nothing really happens. I think it's possible for Mousetrap to attack you like once or twice but for me that never happened. This makes night 1 a good section for me to discuss this game's visuals. One of my absolute favorite things about this game is its inspiration it takes from the Rock of Fire explosion, which if you guys don't know was an animatronic band that was around during the 80s. This was actually brought to my attention from a video made by The L7 Animatronic, which showcases multiple ways this fan game was inspired by the real pizzeria. I love this so much because I find the old animatronic designs from the 80s truly horrifying, even scarier than the designs in real FNAF. So to see those style designs make it into a fan game is just really cool to see. This game also makes sure each of its animatronic designs are extremely disturbing and is not shy at all to make the game very dark and gritty whenever it gets the chance. I especially find Eddie's design horrifying. Something about this style of animatronic is just so uncanny to me and freaks me out every time I see it. The poses on the renders also don't help in making them any less scary. 
Each camera is designed to make these guys look as scary as possible and I think they definitely succeeded on that. The jump scares are also very well done. They are animated very fast but also look super smooth and not unnatural at all. The sound is also out of nowhere and perfect at catching you off guard when you are not expecting it, which leads to them just being absolutely terrifying every time you get jump scared. Okay, so enough about the visuals. After completing night 1, we get this right here. The absolute saddest 6am screen I have ever seen. Like, at least be a little bit more excited that I survived the night. I'm not joking, when I say the first time I beat night 1, I thought this was like a game over screen or something at first, cause the way it fades in so quietly and out of nowhere, I actually thought I died or something. Anyways, once that's out of the way, before moving on to night 2, we get our first post night task. This one has us entering the rewiring station where we are tasked with rewiring one of the circuit boards. This is done through this pretty cool hacking mini game where we need to control this snake through a maze while also using our cursor as a kind of flashlight to reveal the path. This is such a cool concept but I don't think it was executed the best. It's really slow and the whole time they're playing this epic music that just doesn't fit at all with how boring the section actually is. Now there is a more intense hacking section later in the game that actually does fit the music but for this one at least I think it could have done with a different track because it just doesn't fit at all. After doing Doing this three times, yes, three painfully long times, we can finally move on to night two. This night introduces us to Eddie, the animatronic with by far the scariest design in the game. We are also given a shock button, which is explained to us on the phone call as a way to send Eddie back whenever he is approaching. This however is kind of misleading or maybe I just misheard it because I was very confused the first time I played. Basically this is how it works. Eddie makes his way closer and closer to your office through a set path. He always goes through the same cameras before eventually reaching your door where you will need to shock him before he jump scares you. This entire night I was sitting there trying to shock him but he just would not go back no matter what. That is because night 4 Eddie actually begins to do something else and that is when the shock button is needed. Now the phone guy might have explained this but I'm not really sure as for some reason they made the phone guy so quiet and they also made every other sound effect way louder so you literally can't move at all or else you won't be able to hear him. And and even then he is still so quiet. I just want to say, nice job last night. You did admirable work. On the night too. Hopefully Mousetrap wasn't too much of a pain last night because Eddie's up next. For night 2 though, we just need to continue monitoring Mousetrap on the cameras, hiding under the desk every time he peeks his head through the vent or makes it to the top right cam, while also making sure we shock Eddie every time he is at our door. After this pretty simple yet stressful night, we move on to night 2's post night task and this one takes place in the breaker room. We first have to remove some trash from this breaker box before turning on the lights. We are then placed in front of Mousetrap and told that we need to repair his breaker box. We first need to click on him to remove his mask which reveals one of the scariest visuals in the entire game. We can then press a red button on Mousetrap's face to begin his voice command repair. This is a really unique and stressful section where we need to listen to Mousetrap's voice lines and mark where his voice glitches. This is done by playing the audio and pressing space every time the audio glitches. This sounds easy at first but getting the timing perfectly is actually extremely hard. This section actually took me like 10 tries and had me raging after a while because I had to clean the breaker box out after every single attempt. This is still my favorite post night task in the game though. I love how unique the gameplay idea is and I have never really seen anything else like it in another fan game. And I also just love the visuals of Mousetrap's taken apart face. Something about it is just so creepy to me. After marking the glitches and Mousetrap's lines three times, this post night task is complete and we can move on to the third night of the game. Night 3 was very easy for me. This night introduces one more animatronic who goes by the name of Topsy the Clown. 
Topsy the clown will roam around the pizzeria and it is our goal to stop him from reaching this camera and making his way into our office. To stop Topsy we need to find him on the cameras and use this newly introduced button to increase the temperature of the room he is standing in. If you were wondering why these fan icons are always on the map, well this is why. We can hold down this button to increase the temperature and then use the button next to it to lower the temperature back down as soon as Topsy leaves. He doesn't come very often, only appearing like one or two times during the night, so he doesn't serve much of a threat to the player at all. By now, I also felt like I had a very good understanding of both Mousetrap and Eddie's mechanics, so this night was an absolute breeze for me. For night 3's post night task, we are taken to the underground circus. This puts us in a really cool open environment where we are able to look around at several different areas of the attraction. During this, our phone guy tells us to get in a car and take the ride when we are ready. This area is so cool to explore and the visual style of everything makes it feel so eerie. I loved getting up close with this really cool ticket booth and actually looking at the tunnel we get to go down. My only problem with this section is really that it's just so quiet. During this part of the game, I feel like it could have really used some creepy ambient noises to make the player feel unsafe and uneasy when exploring. Hearing random banging and other sound effects from time to time would have kept me on my toes while exploring, always looking out for looming threats. But instead what we got is almost complete silence. After following the phone guy's orders and getting in the cart, we go down this very creepy tunnel which takes us to Topsy's turvy ride repair. Here is what kicks off this game's second hacking stage which is way more difficult than the first one. And not only is it much harder, but my game literally glitched for some reason and the circuit board was more zoomed in than it was supposed to be. This is what the section is apparently supposed to look like, and here's what it looked like in my game. This section was absolutely brutal, especially during the end. The thing that sets this hacking stage apart from the other one is that not only are there much tighter spaces to maneuver through, but now we must also deal with the clown adding these visual effects to our screen. These effects can really mess up your understanding of where you're at on the screen and almost killed me multiple times. We also have to do this again three different times before finishing the task, so believe me when I say I was absolutely sweating on this part to get it done. For night 4, sadly no new animatronics are added and once again we are just surviving against Eddie, Mousetrap, and Topsy. Only this time they appear much more frequently. One new addition to night 4 though is now the shock button for Eddie actually has a use. See from night 4 and on every once in a while Eddie will move to this camera instead of the camera he normally moves to. This is indicated to the player through a sound cue and once heard you must react fast. When Eddie makes his way to this camera you will have a short amount of time to shock him and send him back before he briefly disables your camera. The game is pretty generous giving you the sound cue whenever he moves though, so this mechanic never really gave me any issues during my nights. Night 4's post night task did give me issues though. In Night 4's post night task, we make our way into the restoration room. In this room we have a camera in front of us and a hall with a light behind us. We must pull up this camera and guide Mousetrap around in order to make him avoid running into any fans. While doing this we must also frequently turn around and shine our light on Eddie to make sure he doesn't make his way down the hallway and kill us. While this mechanic does sound simple on paper, it is actually pretty difficult. You will need to time when you will allow Mousetrap to crawl on his own and when you're gonna shine your light on Eddie to avoid making any mistakes. This also goes on forever, forcing you to survive through this for 5 whole minutes, which is longer than any of the other post night tasks. This minigame's controls are also just so disorienting. For some reason you use S to turn back and forth which just feels very strange at first and the whole minigame just has this very stiff and awkward feeling to it but luckily I was able to get past it in like 4 attempts or something like that. Now I do see what they were going for with this minigame and I actually think the concept of keeping Mousetrap away from the fans is really cool. I just think it could have been executed a little better and feels rushed compared to the other post night tasks. For the 5th and final night of the game, 
sadly once again no new animatronics were added. I would have really liked to see this bird guy have his own mechanic in the later nights, because having just 3 animatronics was a little bit too easy to manage in my opinion, and his design is just way too cool to go to waste. I actually did end up dying once in this night to Topsy the Clown, but other than that this night gave me no real issues at all. After beating night 5, instead of another post night task, we load back into the office and make our way through the back door. From here we can follow this cool cutout sign which leads us to yet another cutscene, very similar to the start of the game. This cutscene depicts our player grabbing his paycheck before encountering the mascot scene earlier in the game. He then chases us to a dead end before grabbing us and placing us in what I assume is an animatronic suit. Welcome to the Misfits. Overall, I think that this game had so much potential to be one of the best FNAF fan games. This game really hits the nail on the head when it comes to its visuals, having its own identity, having a lot of content, having unique areas and gameplay situations, but it really misses the mark when it comes to things like the story, which while cool to see during the cutscenes felt rather unimportant during the actual gameplay. I feel like more lore should have been revealed throughout each night opposed to just having a beginning cutscene scene and an ending one. The game also needed to add a new animatronic every single night to keep the gameplay fresh in my opinion. After night 3 when I realized I would only be facing off against Eddie, Mousetrap, and Topsy, I was really disappointed as I was excited to see how the other members of the Misfits behave. For what it is though, this is still an amazing FNAF fan game with a lot of content to check out. The game also does offer some content to hunt for after finishing the game in the form of these photo descriptions you could unlock in various ways, as well as a custom night which from what I've heard is actually pretty difficult. I'm curious to hear what you guys thought of this game though. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know in the comments down below. With that being said though, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.